Hello, good weekend uh, to all. I bring you a review of the FTSE and European markets, and generally all markets, really given the fact that the FTSE certainly has pushed higher. So, try and give you an insight in terms of where this market's heading. Obviously, at present, it's all about the euphoria regarding the uh, the, via, the vaccine, and the markets certainly are pushing higher on the back of obviously global growth, global earnings, and a rebound in uh, basically. Uh, growth globally given the fact that china certainly is leading the uh, the rally okay so in terms of the FTSE 100 let's give you an insight here i mean the main news obviously has been brexit over the weekend but do we really care about it now the market certainly has become desensitized to that okay and it certainly hasn't had the bearish effect that one would have expected given the uh, the back and forth and um given the fact that we are very, very close to the cut-off period as well. Okay, so anyway, uh, in the weekly chart, as you can see, broken out, so you have to respect that, folks, okay? Uh, a technical, obviously, break here. But having said that, we've got previous resistance equal support here at 6550. Obviously, if the market continues to push higher, the next level is 6660, okay? If the market breaks through there, and this market is over overly overly euphoric, okay, given the fact that S&P 500 pushed higher as well, then you are looking to test 7,000. That certainly isn't out of the equation, and even 7,600, 7,800, obviously, if we see the back of or end of COVID. So, certainly take that into consideration. On the other hand, the counter argument is that given the fact that the vaccine, and this is the argument that I've been obviously putting forth, given the fact that I got stopped out last week uh, and I was obviously that was invalidated, the argument was that obviously um, a vaccine uh, basically indicates less stimulus, whether it be fiscal or monetary. And therefore, obviously, markets uh, are no longer get their Kool-Aid, no longer get their, obviously, um, fix, whether it be via the fiscal side or the monetary uh, policy side. And therefore, obviously, they uh, throw a tantrum and obviously we're going to risk off. That was a scenario. But that certainly has been negated by the fact that the vaccine is there and it seems, it certainly seems to be a Goldilocks scenario at present. And that's the way in which the markets are certainly interpreting it. OK. Uh, given the fact that you can see in terms of copper, certainly put bullish as well, although I did expect that certainly to run out of steam. As you can see here, the, the chart of copper really hasn't made a new high uh, from to a large extent, as you can see. Okay, especially on the 15 minute chart on the Friday, certainly hasn't really pushed higher. Um, so given the fact that we had the uh, two doji candles, obviously we have had a bullish engulfing candle since, but we are now coming into a key key resistance zone, as you can see in the weekly chart. And therefore, one would argue that all the bullish news is certainly baked into the cake. If copper, given the fact that it's had one hell of a tremendous run, as you can see here, if this continues to push higher, obviously the markets or equities certainly will push higher as well. So bear that in mind. In terms of the chart of Brent, again, uh, as you can see here, topping tail doji candle. OK, so again, from my perspective, certainly looking for a reversal uh, on the chart of oil and therefore given the fact that OPEC now will obviously go down the route of uh, increasing supply, given the fact that the vaccine is there, and therefore obviously that's risk negative for oil. So take that into consideration as well. Also on Friday, we did have weaker jobs data out of the US as well. COVID cases certainly spiking there, but again, S&P 500 hit new highs. So from my perspective, fundamentals certainly, it's, it's, it's very, very hard to put a fundamental narrative behind this market right now. It just It's basically juiced up on liquidity. And that's basically all it cares about. And now on top of that, you've got this juiced up on the vaccine euphoria. So you have to trade what you see. Stop losses are in. If you're, if you're wrong, stop losses obviously get triggered. And that's exactly what happened on my FTSE short last week. OK, so in terms of copper and obviously uh, oil, certainly looking uh, top heavy. That's all I can say for now. Again, uh, equity certainly not looking top heavy uh, in terms of breaking out. OK, and again, we could get a sharp reversal Monday. We will have to obviously wait and see. We need confirmation for that as well. In terms of the daily chart, obviously very, very bullish. In terms of the daily chart breaking above the uh, 6515, 6510 zone. Again, you do have this key resistance here at 6550, so watch out here. Obviously, if you do push higher than the next potential resistance in the daily chart, <clears throat> it's seen at this uh, inflection point. This inflection point is around 6860. That's that's uh, quite a tremendous move, and the next key resistance is 7000. So. You could get a prolific run on the FTSE here now. Uh, easy 500 point run on the FTSE in the back of the vaccine euphoria. That certainly can't be uh, obviously uh, negated. That's something that certainly needs to be entertained. As a trader, we, we look, we're happy to take either way, whether it be long or short. Given the fact that we have rallied quite substantially from 5,500, 
The fundamental, obviously, um, actor is there, and that's obviously the vaccine euphoria. And, obviously get, and also, given the fact that the UK, obviously, is the first one to adopt the vaccine, obviously, a lot of individuals or a lot of hedge funds will potentially be rotating towards the FTSE, being the, 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 the actual leader in terms of this, uh, obviously, global downturn that we've experienced recently. And we could certainly push higher and go back up to 7,600. So, again, every scenario is a possibility. That's what a trader basically uh, does chaps okay so think of it as a game of chess and every potential obviously uh, piece in the board has a, a scenario that could potentially play out and therefore you need to take into account every single scenario and obviously your stop losses are in and uh, we adjust and uh, obviously uh, accordingly now again if any bearish news overtly bearish fundamental news were to come out on monday which sends a FTSE into a tailspin and moves lower, then obviously I'll be happy to jump on board. But for now, the bias really is bullish on the FTSE. It's going to be very hard for me to argue for a, a bearish, obviously, um, bearish uh, slant uh, in terms of the FTSE, given the fact that it's above that 6550. Then again, easy 6850 next. Okay. Just basically looking at a daily chart. Okay, folks, that's all I'm doing right now. 60 minute chart, yes, certainly very, very overstretched. Okay, one would argue that it is a due pullback and one would expect a, a pullback, but this market certainly is defying gravity at present. And obviously, the vaccine euphoria is the catalyst. That is an impressive move there on the FTSE. Very, very impressive. As soon as we broke above that six. For 70 zone, it was just a powerful short squeeze, and the short squeeze continues. Not just on the FTSE, but the S&P 500 as well, given the fact that obviously you've got COVID cases going through the roof, uh, and also given the fact that obviously the US jobs data on Friday was very, very weak. We had this key diagonal trend line, obviously that's been negated. For now, obviously we broke above the, uh, the pivot here, okay. Uh, the topping tail, the market's pushed higher. It's leaving gaps behind, but it doesn't really care, okay. Again, that is a super, super move on the S&P. If you look at the actual weekly chart, you can clearly see we're making new highs. Absolutely impressive, okay? Uh, given the fact that the news regarding the um, stimulus bill really hasn't been ratified, and given the fact that the, the, the actual bill itself is much lower than expected or everybody expected, so impressive, impressive to say the least. Obviously, vaccine news, vaccine euphoria, obviously stimulus in the background as well, fiscal stimulus in the US, uh, do the Fed extremely dovish. I mean, but buying markets at new highs. I mean, that is um, certainly something I'm not comfortable with right now. It's certainly something I'm not comfortable with right now. I would not be committing any additional money if I was a long-term trader at this uh, at this froth. That's how I uh, basically uh, obviously uh, anticipate. Again, I could certainly be wrong, and uh, happy to uh, accept that and obviously move forward. Okay. In terms of the rest of the uh, equities, let's just give. Let's have a look at the FTSE in comparison to the rest of European equities. Now, one of the reasons why the European equities are obviously uh, lagging behind is because of the euro. The euro certainly pushing higher on the back of a weaker dollar. Now, also the FTSE obviously is benefiting from that as well. Bearing in mind FTSE is commodity related, so when copper, oil, and obviously commodities in general are moving higher, then obviously. Uh, the uh, FTSE will move higher. As you can see here, this is a chart of the dollar index and a weekly chart. Uh, it's just basically in free fall, okay? Totally, totally in free fall, obviously, in the back of that fiscal stimulus, obviously, uh, negates the uh, purchasing power of the dollar, okay? Given the fact that they're taking on more debt, okay? And uh, certainly is risk negative, although we are at a key critical juncture here on the dollar index, as you can see here on the horizontal support zone. Okay, it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts there. Obviously, the weaker jobs data didn't help on Friday, OK, and obviously, given the fact that, uh, I mean, the, the bullish argument for dollar, and again, I don't want to make these videos extremely, extremely long. This is something for a, as a, from a currency's perspective, as you know, I, I trade currencies as well. Those of you that are on the live, uh, obviously, uh, analysis service, uh, trade, uh, obviously, currency in real time as well. But in terms of the dollar itself, one would argue, certainly one would argue, the dollar certainly should technically be be strong on the back of less than expected fiscal stimulus okay and also on the back of biden uh, as well given the fact that the uncertainty regarding the imbecile trump has certainly been negated and obviously biden's pro well not pro china but he's, he's less anti-china than trump okay he's less uh, trade barriers and the trade wars etc than trump and therefore that should tend technically bode well for the dollar uh, to a large extent but that's how the market is interpreting it so we just have to act accordingly uh, okay for now uh, weaker us data weaker obviously higher covid obviously um, infection rates is obviously puts the uh, the recovery in europe and the uk faster than the us 
and therefore obviously the dollar's being dumped on the back of obviously in, in, in sterling and, and euro certainly will be bid as you can see in terms of euro usd let's bring a chart here euro usd i mean look at that move uh, phenomenal obviously on the back of the uh, the dollar itself uh, and also obviously uh, has been helped by the uh, european pmis actually coming in stronger or st stabilizing basically um, certainly putting in a potential uh, bottom in the eurozone and therefore euro certainly obviously catching a bid versus the dollar obviously given the fact that it's basically infection versus infection uh, given the fact that Europe, the Europe has, has a lower infection than the US and has, has it under control, therefore Europe, Euro is certainly being bought and the dollar is being dumped. That's literally the way in which I'm seeing it right now. Um, from my perspective, I've certainly got, I'm certainly bearish on the Euro at this uh, current juncture because obviously you've got the ECB. Uh, obviously they are potentially talking fiscal stimulus and obviously the ECB could certainly, well, certainly is expecting it to be remaining dovish going forward as well. So again, that's certainly something to consider. Okay. Uh, Again, a lot of dynamics at play. I'm not going to cover all the dynamics there in terms of the currency, but the main uh, understanding is that a stronger euro is negative for obviously German exports, and that's why you see you're seeing a lag in uh, the German DAX, as you can see here. We've even failed to close this gap above at 13,590 in the back of a stronger euro. So bear that in mind. Okay, so the German DAX certainly is uh, languishing. Let's put it that way. In terms of the uh, the French CAC, now again, there's a lot of. Uh, concerning a lot of protests over the weekend as well with regards to the security law so a lot of political instability there in france okay obviously the situation regarding coronavirus is stabilizing is getting better okay obviously adding the fact that you got the vaccine a uh, euphoria as well and also given the fact that the french cac is uh, heavily weighted towards commodities very similar to the FTSE, and therefore obviously it's doing slightly better but nowhere near as strong as the FTSE, as you can see okay so FTSE is certainly playing catch up uh, amongst its peers but the gap fill remains at uh, 5688, so watch out for that. And again, obviously, like I said, a stronger euro, certainly keeping that push back. Euro stocks 50, let's just bring this up. Okay, again, languishing. Stuck at this uh, key that horizontal resistance zone, which I've uh, certainly highlighted here. Or oh, two unfilled gaps below, and certainly not as strong as the FTSE 100. So, from my perspective, Europe is at a critical juncture, is at resistance, and therefore one would expect the FTSE to be at resistance. But given the fact that the FTSE is at number one in the vaccine race so far, seems like that's the play in town amongst the hedges. Okay, certainly buying FTSE in anticipation of the fastest recovery post-COVID. Um, and again, obviously the Brexit obviously mess is obviously a, a, a negative factor over the weekend, but is the market really concerned about that? Uh, the dollar obviously is helping the FTSE as well in terms of commodities. If I bring up the actual commodity index, uh, let's have a look here. Wisdom tree, uh, commodity index. Let's just have a look at the next potential resistance here. Uh, you've got gap fill, which obviously we've closed now. Again, it does look very top heavy. That's what I can say. Something I was looking at before. And again, folks, this is one of the reasons why I was actually short the FTSE as well. On the back of this, uh, obviously, quality index hitting resistance, copper hitting resistance, oil hitting resistance. So... I may well be, I may well have timed it uh, poorly, but I certainly was expecting a, uh, obviously, a downdraft from the FTSE, but the vaccine euphoria certainly has negated this argument. And so we'll, we'll assess, I'll assess again. And again, I am a day trader, so let's see what happens in terms of the FTSE. We could certainly easily get a uh, 50 to 100 point pullback, and obviously the markets could certainly push higher again. So we'll see, we'll see. I mean, there is a base here at 6280. And obviously support is seen at 6300 and also you got uh, previous support equals resistance at 6400 so there's a lot to play with here in terms of the FTSE but certainly is the strongest link at the moment and obviously Europe is the weakest link okay I hope that's been a an insight really there in terms of intermarket analysis a lot of variables to take into account and again like I said it's very fluid it's input it's impossible for me as a trader really to forecast exactly what's going to happen tomorrow until I see what happens in Asia overnight and obviously any uh, obviously uh, fundamental news flow that obviously uh, carries out throughout the day uh, and obviously the uh, the markets can certainly change in terms of their risk tolerance. Okay folks, I think that's a wrap. Uh, good night and I wish you the best for Monday's trading.